All right, we're live. All right. Uh, do you want to start off? or? To... <laughs> okay, so just for context of the viewers, uh, we actually did our opening intros and stuff, and I forgot to turn on the recording, so yeah, here we are. <laughs> so uh, do you want to start over? Sure. Uh, well, I guess you don't uh, misunderstand socialism. Uh, I think you just apply it to non-socialist nations, I guess, uh, like Venezuela. Because uh, you understand what it is, but you just... I don't know. I don't know your thinking. Uh, but statistics, the earliest statistics I can find uh, about private ownership in Venezuela is from 2010, uh, surprisingly from Fox News. Uh, and it's like the majority of the economy is, uh, or the GDP is produced from private enterprise or annual GDP. Uh, it's from private enterprise, uh, not public, which would pretty much be socialism. All right. So I'm just going to start over with what I said before, just so my listeners could hear it. Yeah. So if that's okay. Yeah. So my contention is that, just to be clear, we have to define our terms. In this case, socialism is the implementation of a system of communal ownership of the means of production. In the case of Venezuela, this is manifested in the state. And as such, a socialist state would at least over time, uh, consolidate the means of production into its hands. And my contention is that, although it is by no means complete, that what is happening in, so what is happening in Venezuela is a faithful implementation of socialism and socialist ideas. And for this reason, I do contend that Venezuela can be labeled as socialist. Well, how is it? Uh, faithfully implementing socialist ideas. A faithful implementation of socialism would be in 1999, before the uh, Bolivar Revolution, there were 12,700 private companies operating in Venezuela. As of 2016, if I recall correctly, there's only one third of that <laughs> number, a very large number of which, including foreign companies, have had their facilities and buildings totally confiscated and nationalized. For example, let's see if I can find it again. There was the situation of GM owning a plant in April 20, 2017 that had 2,700 workers that was just confiscated by the Venezuelan government. And you can find this all over the economy. In 2007, you can find uh, Hugo Chavez announcing plans to nationalize the telecommunications industry, which is basically the media. Was it a telecommunication? Or was it like a, what was it? Uh, a company or? G the GM plant? No, for the uh, telecommunications. Telecommunications would basically cons basically amount to television, to radio. It's not oh, one company. Yeah. It's all the companies. Okay. It's an entire... We're talking about the nationalization of an entire industry. <laughs> but how much of the, uh, I guess, enterprise would be... Na is nationalized? At what percentage, you mean? Yeah. I doubt I could come up with that number off the top of my head. But to be honest, I really don't think that's relevant because what's really going to be important is whether or not the country is moving in a direction towards increasing nationalization, increasing consolidation of the means of production into the hands of a collective organization, which given that there are very few, there's very little privatization going on in Venezuela, if at all, we can safely conclude that they are moving towards collectivization well your claim is that it's currently socialist and it's currently collectivized mm -hmm. but you're def I'm afraid that your definition of collectivism or collectivization is that the country must be 100% uh, 
uh, nationalized. No, I would just argue the majority. The majority? Okay, so yeah. if the country is, like, let's just assume the means of production are completely private, and it's effectively some anarcho-capitalist situation where everything is from the police to the military everything is privately owned and then somehow the socialist government gets into power and begins uh, nationalizing industries it's this is not socialist until it reaches the 51 percent mark uh i yes yeah so what is it what is the difference between 50 percent and 51 percent that merits a uh, difference in label I would just say it's there should be some sort of line there. Obviously, if forty percent or forty nine percent, I don't know, of a nation's industry would be socialized, I would agree that it's a socialist nation. Uh, but if it's desocializing, then I don't know. It's just easier to have some sort of line there. All right. All right, let's, uh, it's, oh, sorry, continue. It, it shouldn't be a permanent line, you know? Like, it should be 50%, but if it's like 49%, then yeah, I would argue that's, uh, that's a social. I'm going to be putting this on my channel, so I would ask politely that you please don't swear. Oh, yeah, my apologies. It's all right. Okay, so... uh my let's uh, think about this in the reverse then. Take uh, Chile under Augusto Pinochet. Previously it was, I don't have those numbers in front of me, but it was a pretty socialist country with very large numbers, percentages of the economy being nationalized. And what he did was, like once he became very capitalist, he privatized much of the industry, much of the means of production within Chile. However, for the duration, for, for, however, for a good percentage of his uh, being in power, the economy was mostly nationalized. Would you characterize that as capitalist? Did the workers own the industries that they worked in? Well, that's communism. No, there there wouldn't be a state. Or well, yeah, but the ownership of the means of production, the point of the Communist Manifesto was that in order to transition into the communist state, uh, so to speak, because there's no state under an uh, end goal of communism, that you need to empower an organization to effectively collectivize and democratize the means of production. In this case, it'll be in the hands of an organization that is controlled democratically by the workers, which would essentially be the state. So I think we got to be clear in our definitions here. <laughs> but that isn't, if the if just the state owns it, then the workers don't own it. Mm-hmm. So then that isn't socialism or communism, that's capitalism. Uh, well, that can't be capitalism because capitalism is private ownership and government ownership is not private ownership. But then how is it socialist or communist? It's socialist. Well, it's not communist. I think we can agree on that. But it is socialist because a democratic government owns the means of production. I don't think Pinochet was very democratic. No. I'm not saying he was democratic at all, but prior to Pinochet, he was... Uh, was it democratic? I actually don't remember. Yeah. Right. So I'll take your word for that. So yeah. democratic government democratic government owning the means of production is very much socialist. But weren't you just saying that under Pinochet, that's when the industries were nationalized. No, no, no. I'm saying the reverse. I'm saying before Pinochet, it was nationalized, but until it was able to become, say, 40 or 51 percent capitalist, where industry was privately owned, 
it was mostly nationalized. And maybe I'm recalling it incorrectly. Someone's probably going to correct me on this. But this is just the information I have off the top of my head. So, are you arguing that Pinochet and his government was socialist or the government before that? No, my point is that in the meantime, towards achieving a majority, uh, socialist, or sorry, in the meantime, towards uh, approaching a majority capitalist economy, because let's be honest, these are all going to be mixed economies. <clears throat> We can say that Chile under Pinochet was capitalist because they were moving towards privatization. And thus, I would say that whether or not a society can be judged as socialist or capitalist can be most easily and most consistently defined as whether or not they're moving towards nationalization or privatization. But if we're arguing that a nation is currently so, like, collectivized or privatized, and we have to look at how it is currently. Yes. So looking towards what it's going to be like in the future isn't looking at it currently. Looking at what it's going to be like, no, but uh, looking at what it's going on right now is very much in line with where it's going. I mean, it's like a car... But that it, it's, like a, no. it's like a car traveling down the road and... It's going, it's going to reach an intersection. The fact that it hasn't reached an intersection yet is irrelevant to the fact that it's going in that direction. It's going towards an intersection. But you're arguing that it's at that intersection. I am not. I am simply saying that the fact that it's going towards that intersection is evidence that's going towards that intersection. In this case, I define a socialist country as a country that is moving towards total nationalization. Of course, a country that has already reached uh, total nationalization also fits this criteria. Well, yeah, but it, it's not currently, though. It's not currently, but it is moving in that direction, correct? I, I don't really know uh, that much about Venezuela uh, economic-wise. Just... Well, well, I've already told you that... Uh, Prior to the Bolivar Revolution in 1999, we had 12,700 private companies in Venezuela. And as of 2016, that number is just off the top of my head, it could be wrong. Uh, there was only one third of that number, including uh, 600 companies that are just completely, uh, that have just been completely seized and nationalized. And of course, the companies that aren't nationalized are under the direction of democratically or democratic uh, central planning boards including for example let's see if I can find it again Including, for example, oh, what are they called? There's an organization called the Urban Land Committees in Venezuela that were established under uh, Maduro. Under uh, not Maduro, the uh, Chavez. They were established oh, yeah. in uh, roughly 2006, and they are given the how it works is that organiz or organiz there are organizations of about like 100 to 300 residents who <laughs> basically communalize their property and have the ability and are in fact empowered by the government to determine how that property is used and <clears throat> who gets to live there. In which case, while there is a nominal version of property, the fact of the matter is that the government could seize it at any time and in fact has the power to basically control it. In which case I wouldn't exactly call that property. What? Well, how... This is just going to specifics. Uh, or... Uh, uh, what's the word? 
Do you mean it's, semantics? It's, yeah, some, well, I wouldn't say semantics. Just it's irrelevant that there's some organization that collectivizes farms that could be seized by the government. Uh, if the majority of the economy is private, then it's it's a capitalist state. Or at least it isn't a socialist or communist one, which we've already read it isn't communist. Mm-hmm. But I just don't understand. I'm just trying to figure out like how you can consistently say that uh, a country that is 50.1 percent privately owned is somehow one label, but when it's 50.0, it isn't. As I've said, it's not a definite line. It could just. I would argue that it's a mix if it's exactly 50-50. Uh, I wouldn't say it's either a capitalist or a socialist nation. Just a very unique and weird mix. If it's a fifty, uh, if it's at uh, fifty percent, but say forty nine point nine percent is what causes it to become a capitalist country. I'm sorry, uh, 49 percent causes what is what causes it to become a socialist country. Then, what it what a mixed economy is is a very 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 delicate balance. I mean, if you want to be consistent, I think the simplest thing to say is that. Uh, Venezuela is a mixed economy and until it reaches total privatization or total collectivization then it is neither capitalist nor socialist I, I wouldn't say that it has to be completely 100% uh, collectivized for it to be socialist that's way too high of a bar yeah uh, I can uh, in, sorry now. to continue uh, but if it's like a good 50% or 49% or 48% collectivized or privatized. It's neither. All right. Uh, I guess I'm going to change my position on, on that. But I it that's sort of my point. It isn't a socialist nation. Uh, whether or not it's going towards socialism is kind of irrelevant if it's currently socialist or if it's currently mixed. Okay, and so... Not so Okay, so it's not a capitalist economy, it's a mixed economy. I mean, I don't know too much about it, so I, I don't, uh, I wouldn't say it's either. I just, I don't, I just don't think it's socialist. Uh, why isn't it socialist? Simply because of a percentage? I mean, well, the multiple percentages I referenced in my video. Mm-hmm. And you are, <clears throat> yeah. And the numbers you did cite were sound. However, they <laughs> aren't. I don't believe that they are relevant in terms of the state of the country. As I've said, you agree that it is moving in the direction of socialism, correct? Um, I don't know too much about it uh, or its economic policies, but from what you described, I would say it's heading there. Yes, and you would agree that the government is an organization that collectivizes the means of production. Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so uh, just hypothetically, suppose we have a society where 100% of the means of production are, are uh, controlled and owned by the state. Would that be a socialist country? Uh, it just depends if the workers own it. If the state mandates that only elites can own it, then that would not be a socialist nation. What would the term for that be? I don't know. Yeah, someone was probably going to have to. Uh, uh, someone's probably going to have to identify that. I believe that would be. Uh, mm, I want to say feudalist. How so? You have basically everything is controlled by a higher authority, which distributes the land according to according to the people that they like, according to the elites they're probably going to be the one who decides who the elites are going to be in the first place they in turn are going to be able to pass down control to whatever vassals they happen to be in control of and for everybody else well, you're basically <coughs> on what the highest authority deems to be their land uh, yeah, I'd agree with you. Yeah, so that might be feudalism. 
But anyways, so we agree that Venezuela is moving in the direction towards total nationalization. Uh, from what you've told me. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, and we also agree that a system of total nationalization would be socialist. No. Because it, it could s still, if the workers do not own the means of production, then it isn't, it isn't socialist. But the mo means of production are democratized. But do the workers own it? Do the workers need own it? Yeah. How so? The workers need to own the means of production. What do you mean by own it? Or what do you mean, how so? What I mean is that uh, the point of socialism, as described, is that it needs to be collectivized. It needs to be made so no one person or one organization outside of this collective uh, organization that is <coughs> empowered by the workers to act on their behalf democratically can own property or in this case the means of production uh, so I... so the people so the workers of Venezuela did democratically elect the government correct uh, yeah and the on their so on their behalf the democratically elected government is currently seizing the means of production Uh, I've from what you've said, yeah. So, but how as as of right now, but as of right now, the people do the majority of the people, or the majority of the industries, whatever you call, them, they're not owned by the workers, or the state. The majority, mm -hmm. the large majority, actually. But the fact that the large majority of industry is that is not currently owned by a state is irrelevant to the fact that it is moving in that direction, correct? I would say so, yeah. And once it crosses this uh, unknown threshold of a percentage of the economy that needs to be owned by a state before it becomes socialist... It's not socialist, correct? Yeah. Okay, so I still need to know what that threshold is. It, it would be somewhere around 50%, I guess. 15? No, 50. <clears throat> I'm still not sure why not 49. As I've said two times before, it's not a definite threshold. But it needs to be a definite threshold. I mean, otherwise, we're going to be talking in circles here, not being, not being, nobody having any idea what each other's talking about. How, how so? Well, I mean, one person's going to say it's socialist, one person's going to say it's capitalist, and no one's going to know what each other's talking about. Especially since we're already operating under different definitions of what makes a country socialist or not. But we agree on what socialism is. That's correct. However, you're trying very hard to make sure that Venezuela is not socialist. Mainly by pointing out that although that because it hasn't arrived at this magical threshold yet, we can't apply the label of where it's going. Repeat yourself? What? Uh... The, like last ten words you said. Because because we can't agree on whether that magical threshold is relevant or not to what label we apply to the country. That's basically the our form of disagreement. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's well, very... we we agree on what we disagree on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Well, that's interesting because I have a list here of a whole bunch of people who, in as early as 2012 and 2013, and this was before the GM plant was seized, by the way, so we have a full five, six years of nationalizations that would have occurred in this timeline. A whole bunch of people who did, who do also agree that uh, Venezuela, at the time of their saying it, was real socialism, and in fact indicative of socialism success. This was before, of course, the mass famines and starvation came out. Uh, well, you can you can get a million people who agree something is socialist or capitalist, but unless you can actually prove it, it isn't. That's just anecdotal evidence. Well, let me just read off a few names. Oliver Stone, a filmmaker, actor, and guy who always dies, Sean Penn. Jesse Jackson, <laughs> documentary maker and professional propagandist, Michael Moore. Labor Party leader in the UK, Jeremy Corbyn. Argentinian soccer player, Diego Maradona. Journalist, uh, Naomi Campbell economist and senior advisor for the Hillary Clinton campaign, Joseph Stiglitz, and uh, Noam Chomsky. I'm sure you've heard of most of those people. Yeah. And and then you have the filmmaker and actor, Danny Glover. Don't think you've heard of him, but apparently he was given $18 million by the Venezuelan government to direct a movie about the Haitian Revolution, though it was never released. All right. Well, I'm, those are people who agree with you. Yeah. Those are people who agree with me that it was social, that it's socialist, and several of them said that it's indicative of, it's a, that Venezuela was in fact a success story of socialism. So I'm curious. <laughs> so I am curious, like, what changed from 2012 to 2017 that made it from a, a success story of socialism to state capitalism. I'm sorry, let me uh, rephrase that. What changed that made it a story of capitalism to uh, a story... I can't word right now. (laughs) Sorry. What is it that changed from 2013 to 2018 that made Venezuela socialist to state capitalist? I mean, you're you're asking me to explain what these other people are they i mean these you're arguing that sometime in between there based off of what those celebrities said that uh it's it's so it's economy somehow changed uh which i i never argued and i'm not i don't agree with that uh statement that it's somehow changed in between those few years all right, so you disagree with those people? I would say, yeah. All right. So, how is it capitalist then, besides the large sections of the economy that are going to be largely controlled by these land organizations I described earlier? How is that capitalist? Well, now that I've given it a little bit more thought, I would say it's a sort of mixed economy. Uh, but again, I'm going to stick with the notion that it is not socialist. Well, which, which uh, political party is in charge of, go- of the government right now? Uh, I'm, assu- I'm assuming it has socialist in their name, uh, uh, and you're going to argue that. Yeah. Yeah, they're the socialist party. I mean, the DPRK is a Democrat, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, but it's not really known for being democratic. <laughs> yeah, and I think you can make the case that the Venezuela has in recent years become much less democratic, especially as the uh, Maduro is basically installing himself as a dictator. You remember what happened with the Venezuelan Supreme Court? Uh, yeah, there was like a grenade attack. Grenade attack? I don't don't think I've heard about that. I read something about a helicopter that someone in a helicopter 
drop grenades onto it had uh, Supreme in its name uh, I'm assuming it's a Supreme Court oh. <laughs> alright yeah so Venezuela's Supreme Court uh, gave Nic Nicolas Maduro power to basically make budgetary decisions which as you might imagine is well extremely powerful you can determine what the gov <laughs> what the uh, government is going to spend money on yeah so in that respect I suppose you could say that's become less democratic but I don't think that's relevant to whether or not the country is moving no, in the direction towards increasing nationalization I mean I still no, but I'm, I'm still not sure what this magical threshold is I'm, I'm saying that you're about to argue that because the party, the leading party, has a socialist in their name, that means, or that's supporting that it's a socialist, socialist nation, mm -hmm. which I really disagree with. Uh, I mean, the Nazis had socialist workers' party in their name, but that's the well, whole thing. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to argue. Well, that's funny because I could pull up the. NSDAP's 25-point uh, manifesto, and I'm pretty sure you would agree with most, if not all, of it. I, that's a different argument, man. It is. But I just I just think it's interesting to point out. My viewers should look up the the NSDAP, which is the National Socialiche Deutsche Arbiter Party's uh, manifesto. <clears throat> A.K.A. the National Socialist German Workers' Party. Look it up. It's... Uh, well, I doubt there's very little of it that you would disagree with. Uh, all right. Well, I'm I'm countering that just because it has something in their name doesn't mean it's that something. I could say I have a six foot penis, <laughs> but that uh, that wouldn't be true. That would be true. Yeah, it's a diff that's a discussion for another time. Anyways, back to Venezuela. <laughs> So, I also happen to have a list of a whole bunch of nationalizations that have occurred under Chavez as of 2012. <laughs> so this information is pretty out of date. Yeah, they, ever since like 2013, they have not released much information about their economy. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. So in 2007, Chavez's government took a majority stake in four oil projects in the vast Orange, Orange Choco heavy crude belt, worth an estimated 30 billion in total. Now what happened there is that the government basically forced uh, the oil companies, <coughs> who were mostly foreign, into giving the government a majority shareholder status in their rigs, which if you're aware of how business works, basically means that they control it. Now, yeah. what makes this interesting is that it, in addition to the land uh, organizations I mentioned earlier, this shows that it's very much possible that the government could be controlling the means of production without actually owning it, without actually nationalizing it. Think of it as a soft nationalization. Nominally, the <clears throat> these oil these oil rigs and oil companies are still privately owned, but all the decisions are going to be made by the government and passed through the government. Okay, but do the workers own it? That's my main thing. If the workers do not own it, it is not socialist. It is owned through a, it is owned to the government who is, that is acting on the behalf of the workers. But do the do do the workers own it? I don't think you could. I don't think that's a realistic threshold to. I don't think that's a reasonable threshold. Um, it's it's been met uh, in other nations. It's, it's been, been met in other nations. I doubt you could. Hello? I doubt that. Uh, Cuba. That that would be one. Kerala, that's not a nation, but it's a state in India. Uh, I, I don't know enough about. Uh, I don't know enough about yeah. 
what was it called the Kalaba? <laughs> Kerala. I don't blame you. It's yeah. yeah I, I've never heard that name before. My apologies. That's fine. It's <laughs> the majority will have it, uh, so I don't really blame you. But uh, but yeah, nations and states have met it before and do now, though like less than a dozen nations and states do meet that threshold apparently. Well, in the way you could say that the United States is worker owned mm -hmm. means of production. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Well, what do you think the stock market is? Every worker can literally own a piece of the means of production through the stock market, especially in, uh, especially in, uh, publicly traded companies and there are some uh, companies that even offer stock options which allow people to be paid in stocks to their company so in that respect there are companies in the United States especially major publicly traded corporations that actually give uh, their workers a piece of the ownership of the means of production well that's just sort of an appeasement of the workers I mean Everything that the workers have gotten now is has gotten through. Uh, I'm going off on a tangent, uh, but oh, by all means, please continue. Uh, everything that the workers have gotten uh, in terms of rights uh, is either through capitalist appeasement, meaning uh, giving them just enough so they don't complain, uh, and when they do complain and are successful, that's another way they can get their rights. Mm -hmm. Or have gotten the rights, but yeah, that was a tangent. All right, it's well, kind that's... of uh, related. All right, well, you brought up an interesting point. Uh, I would like to, I would actually like to uh, talk about that, but I just want to uh, let you know that we would be steering off the topic of Venezuela and onto the nature of how rights work. <laughs> uh, I I would rather focus on Venezuela. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so you would so you would agree that in Venezuela, the socialists are in, the socialists are in power and operating on behalf of the workers. Uh, the ones who claim they're socialists. I mean, well, I mean, I would have to see the ways in which the socialist party is acting in ways contrary to socialism, or at least not in socialism in socialism's interest. I wouldn't say they're directly acting against socialism, but they... How long have they been in power? A few decades now? Or a decade? Yes. Well, I mean, we're operating... Yeah. We're talking about Venezuela in the context of after the Bolivar Revolution in 1999. I confess I am not entirely uh, knowledgeable about Venezuela prior to then, but I am aware that... There was the Nationalization Act of 1970, if I recall correctly, that basically gave the government a form of soft nas national, basically made the oil industry in Venezuela soft nationalized, as I talked about earlier. Still privately owned, but the government makes all the decisions. All right, well... To, to the workers on it. We keep coming, keep going in circles. Yeah, we are going it, in circles here. To the workers on it. Here's a question. Uh, what would the workers owning it look like? Like, how would you know that the workers owned it? Uh, the workers have full democratic control over their workplace. They elect managers who are accountable. They usually, in a socialist society, they elect managers. There's different flavors of socialism with and without managers, but usually managers are elected by the workers, accountable to the workers, and are at essentially the same status as workers, except they manage things, as the name implies. Well, given that's how uh, land is already controlled by or that's given that's how land is already controlled in Venezuela 
where homeowners and uh, previous <coughs> owners of the land all democratically get together into these committees and are empowered by the state to make these decisions. I would say that that's actually already what's happening because, well, you can own the land, you can own the means of production all you want privately, but if some committee decides that they want to appropriate your land for the greater good for whatever reason, then whatever you own doesn't really matter. Most importantly, they can just take it at any time without any protection or recourse besides uh, international law. All right. Uh, I guess that section of the economy would be worker owned, but I don't well, see how that's going to be Venezuela is socialist. It's not just a section of the economy, because as you might imagine, the means of production have to be have to have physical facilities. They have to physically acquire land and physically have land. And yeah. if the land can be seized at any time, then the factory can be seized at any time. Um, I would agree. Yeah. So effectively, they're... Now, maybe I'm overestimating the power of these uh, urban land committees. Yeah, I'm sure there's some sort of restrictions mm -hmm. to them. Well, I'm sure what I'm sure the biggest restriction is that the biggest restriction is the Overton window not being uh, not being towards or not being acceptable towards total nationalization, and they find that a status quo of this mixed economy of this currently mixed economy is best, or at the very least, not as bad. And how does this uh, make this uh, or prove social or Venezuela is a socialist nation? Because the power, because the power to seize this, to seize the land at any moment, exists, and the legally recognized right to do so. The fact of the matter is that the reason it hasn't been taken yet is largely just because of uh, the lack of the lack of popular will. Well, then that isn't socialist. If the workers don't know it, then that isn't socialist. The workers could. The, the workers. My point is that the workers could own it at any moment. I mean, I'm. This will be kind of a stretch, but theoretically, uh, they can. Uh, people in the U.S., the workers, they can have a revolution and overthrow the government and uh, establish a communist uh, society, but. That's just, in theory, they can do that. That doesn't mean the United States is a communist society by any standard. Of course not, but the difference is that they don't have a legally recognized right to do so. I mean, if they had a gun to every member of Congress's head and were basically using them as puppets, then I think, yeah, you could make that point, where they could just pull the trigger at any moment and then seize power. I see your point there, but I just I do the workers own it. Yes, I know yes, they do. Doing. Yes, they do, indirectly, oh, but they but they do. So how? Through, I've told you. I've already explained how their urban land committees work. Theoretically, they they own it. Uh, in theory, they can just take it, but they haven't. They haven't yet. Yes. But it is very clear and that the Venezuelan indeed. government, which is operating on behalf of the workers, is moving in that direction. Whether or not they'll cross this un this unclear uh, magical threshold at any point in the future before they're overthrown by uh, popular support or just simple total economic collapse, it's unclear. But I think a more reasonable and consistent threshold is that if you want to label something a socialist, if you want to label a country as being one way or another, you can uh, look in the direction they're heading. But that's just, that's arguing for the direction that they're heading. It's not a current, it's not a 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, bullet point, I guess, to meet. I think it is. Because if you're curious about what they are right now, then what they're doing right now is moving in that direction. It's like a car headed towards, like I've used the car metaphor before, before, the car heading towards New York. That's what it is. It's a car going towards New York. They could change direction at any time. They could stop and go for gas. They could turn around and head back home. But for right now, they're heading towards New York. You're arguing that they are in New York. Because of the simple fact that they're heading towards New York. Mm Mm-hmm. I suppose and you could... that is, that is an, they're not in New York because they're heading to New York. I suppose it is a poor metaphor in that regard because you, there's a clearly defined threshold of whether or not something is New York by geographical area. However, there's not a clearly defined boundary that society needs to cross in terms of nationalization versus privatization that needs to be reached. You just need to enter, to enter New York. You need you need to go into the city limits. I'm sorry, the uh, state the state boundaries. You just need to cross that line. But with socialism, I'm still unclear on where this magical threshold is. I've said three times before, uh, it's not a definite line, but fifty percent of the economy, or no, I wouldn't. No, that's. I would argue that's a mixed economy, but... Well, where's it? I need to know where this magical line is. If it's, uh... Um, it would, I guess it would be somewhere between 50 and 100% uh, uh, collectivized. Well, I can tell you exactly where the boundary to between, say, the state of Connecticut and the state of New York is. I, however, I would need to know exactly where the line between a capitalist economy, or I'm sorry, a mixed economy and a socialist economy is. There isn't. There isn't one? So... No. Who are you to say that... So then, if there's no line at all, who are you to say that they aren't already socialist? I'm someone who knows that the large majority of the economy isn't collectivized. A large majority of the economy isn't collectivized, but the simple fact that they're moving in that direction, I think, shows clear intent. Intent, but that isn't the current reality. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't even know what the current reality is by your own admission. You don't know where that line is, and for all you know, it could be like 1%. Well, that's just an argument that they're... It, it isn't. It isn't an argument that it's socialist. I just because it's ignorance of what the line is uh, doesn't mean that that line could be anywhere. Well, you don't know where that line is. Yeah, but uh, an economy that's zero point one percent. Uh, let's say 0.1% uh, collectivized isn't really in a collectivized economy. How do you know? Sorry, I'm getting cold. Okay, uh, what? How do you know? I don't know what. How do you know that 0.1% uh, nationalized economy isn't a socialist? Because 99.9% isn't. Well, you don't know what the threshold is. Uh, fuck, I'm getting a call. Sorry. It's my sister. Uh, hold on, let me text her. I'm sorry. All right. I said, uh, how do you know that 0.1% of the economy being nationalized isn't nationalized? I mean, I can tell you that you can have an economy that's 
100% privatized, and it could very well still be socialist simply because the workers might very well be the ones who own everything. And there's a very clear protection of private property <laughs> rights that, through the state, or alternatively, it could be 100% nationalized, even though it's 100% privately owned, for the simple fact that the government operates through a 100% uh, sy or system where all businesses are essentially operated through the state, through the form of soft national through the form of soft nationalization I described earlier. But just because the state is working on behalf of the workers does not mean the workers own it. The workers have to own it or it isn't social. So your threshold for socialism is that they have to be uh, directly owning it. And they can't uh, yeah. have an organization owning something on their behalf in the same way that like a person could own property through a trust fund in the United States. Uh, I guess so. What? Yeah. So, for, so, in other words, an economy, workers cannot empower other organizations to own stuff on their behalf. Well, it depends on what organizations they are. If it's a state, then that's a different story. But if it's a union... Uh, I, I, I can't, I can't, could you, uh, I, I think you're a little far away from your mic. Could you speak up? Okay, is this better? A uh, little bit. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, how about now? That's a lot better. Okay. Uh, that would be De Leonism, if a union owns the music oh. production. But uh, you're, you're far away from your mic free. again. Oh. If it's a state that owns the means of production, that isn't socialism. All right, so what kind of organization would the workers be able to empower that makes it socialism? Um, a union would be one. That would be uh, specifically Galeonism. Uh, you're, I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry, um... Um, okay, uh, how about now? That's a little better. Okay. Um, if the if a union, honestly, a worker democratic union, that would be daily honesty. Uh, there's an example of an organization. You're kind of mumbling. Oh. Hello? 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 Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. You're a little quiet, though. Uh, uh, I guess my sister calling me might have messed something up. Uh, what's your rebut? Uh, could you repeat it one more time? Uh, if... An organization, an organization that the workers control only in the means of production, that would be social, pretty much. But it it just depends on the government, really. Uh, so if like you, it's not in, it's Venezuela's government isn't that democratic. Um, I think you said that yourself mm -hmm. a little bit ago. So that's a, if I'm, the workers don't have much power over the government, that isn't really socialism. I mean, yeah, that, that wouldn't be socialism. Okay. What is your... I'm, what's your about? I'm currently thinking. Sorry. That's all right. Let me respond to my sister's text. Yeah. So what kind of government would satisfy you that it's real socialism? A directly democratic one. Directly democratic. So, yeah. like, uh, what example? I mean, I a real-world example, uh, the USSR, I would say. Uh, but that, there's, like, a... 
big debate going on in leftist communities uh, whether or not the USSR was socialist, so I wouldn't say a death. But yes, that's uh, the USSR was entirely uh, democratic. So I can't put real world examples of this, uh, but that would be my threshold. Something's funky. Something funky's going on with your phone. Are what? You, are you moving around? I'm walking. You're walking. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, All right, uh, I can sit. <laughs> that that would probably help. Yeah, because you were like uh, coming in and out. Yeah. All right. Uh, what would? What's your response? You brought up the USSR, right, as an example of direct democracy, even though. Uh, well. I said I wasn't really sure about it because uh, a debate has been sparked up in the leftist community uh, on whether or not it was socialist. So. All right, well, I'm not talking to the uh, so-called leftist community, and I don't want to use that term because I think the political spectrum is worthless. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyways, I would the... Say, uh... you, you can tell me. Yeah, man. Is Cuba direct democracy? Uh, yes, I would. Well, it, it's not direct, but it's one of the most democratic in the world currently. But it's not direct democracy. I guess I phrased uh, it wrong. Uh, it doesn't have to be specifically directly democratic, but it has to be very democratic. And that's not the entire thing. It can be a lot of things, uh, it, but one of the main uh, boxes to check would be that it's it's very democratic. And what's the difference between democratic and very democrat democratic? Well, uh, the U.S. I guess uh, it's the U.S. isn't very democratic. Uh, I think you would agree. Uh, it's a rep, it's representative, and even then, it's it's been cheated a lot. Well, I don't uh, know. Like with Hillary. Well, I don't uh, know what's. So. Uh... I don't know what very democratic means, so I can't say whether or not uh, uh, Cuba. the U.S. is... That would be very democratic. Uh, Cuba would be... Uh, Cuba doesn't describe anything to me. Uh, I only recently learned about uh, democracy in Cuba. Uh, essentially... Uh, there are little uh, communals. There's like three stages uh, of governance, basically, of elections. There are little communals in about every uh, populated town. And the work, or not the workers, the people who live in the town get together and they do a vote by hand uh, of who they want uh, to represent them. And then they would go on uh, to vote, essentially, or they would be voted into the. I forget the name of it, but it's basically the uh, Congress of Cuba, uh, and it's one of there's like six hundred something. Uh, I, for lack of a better term, senators uh, who would. Uh, represent the different regions and uh, people of Cuba and I would say that's very very democratic and the uh, what is it the uh, people running for the election they cannot advertise on TV or radio they have a billboard outside a voting place where the uh, voters read about them uh, and what they plan to institute and yeah, that would be very democratic. Well, that sounds like the that sounds like the uh, what are they called? The urban land committees in Venezuela, which is very much a participatory democracy and very decentralized. It's a group of, as I said, like one hundred to three hundred homeowners who get together and make decisions that 
are in power, that have the force and power of government to affect their <clears throat> daily lives. Well, that, I mean, that, the system I described is for all of Cuba and, uh, like, for its government. That is just the system in Venezuela is a is for its government. Is, I'm sorry, you mumbled that last one? Is far from that. Well, the urban land organizations sound very much like that. I mean, the central... Yeah, but they don't... The they central, don't it's not for electing individuals in government. Well, they don't uh, elect individuals in government. They elect the decisions... Them, they make the decisions themselves democratically. It's sort of like a... It's sort of... Uh, but if anything, it's, for the... If anything, that is direct democracy because they're voting the homeowners in these organizations... And keep in mind, it's not just one big monolithic organization. It's uh, 100 to 300 homeowners per organization, so there's literally thousands of them. Each of them are using direct democracy to make decisions, or participatory direct democracy, to make decisions on behalf of their communities. Well, then what's, what's the point of the government? The point of the central government is to make central policy determined things like uh, monetary policy through the central bank, determined uh, production quotas, and make those make big production decisions on behalf of the organizations they uh, have nationalized or have soft nationalized. How much power do these uh, communities, whatever? So. How much do these communal? How much power do these communals hold over? Uh, I don't know uh, policy in general in government. Uh, that's very unclear, unfortunately. Um, in terms of what their... power do they hold over the uh, legislative body? In the central government, you mean? Yeah. Not much. Well, then that's. That's kind of far from Cuba and how it does its uh, voting, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you can call. I don't think you can call everything. I don't. I think we can agree that uh, a government doesn't have to be Cuba to be uh, to meet the threshold of very democratic. I know, but that's that's the example I used, and you said mm -hmm. the communals in Venezuela were a lot like the Cuban uh, voting process. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean in the sense that the smallest or the smallest uh, governing organization that has well, tremendous power in their immediate vicinity. It's uh, very much a participatory direct democracy. Are you talking about Venezuela and the communals? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. And remember, and let's uh, step back for a minute here. You remember what you talked about in terms of the majority of Venezuela being privately owned? Mm hmm. How, what percentage of that is under some form of soft nationalism or nationalization? Uh, I, I don't know. That's kind of important. Well, I. You would agree that uh, an organization. Uh, a factory that is soft nationalized by the government, which again means that the government controls it, though someone else privately owns it. That that's a form of nationalization. If the government owns it, then yeah. Well, the government doesn't own it; they just control it. They basically make all the yeah. deci they make all the uh, decisions, the executive decisions, set quotas, everything. They determine what the budget is all that stuff, yeah. but it's still privately owned, at least nominally, that that's a form of nationalization. Uh, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, so what's, uh, given that that is, no given that soft nationalization is not counted under nationalization statistics, because the number of actually nationalized organizations is actually around, like, 600, what percentage of the remaining uh, privately owned businesses are 
soft nationalized. I, I don't. You said that's not really. I, I can't hear you. You said uh, it's not counted in uh, nationalized statistics, so I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. So just uh, take a guess how much do you think it is? I, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's why I asked for a guess. Uh, 50%. Don't say that. What? 50%. I, I can't hear you. Fifty <laughs> percent. Okay. And I would say it's a. I would actually say it's a lot larger, because simply using oh. "quote unquote" capitalist United States as a example, we have large swaths of the economy that are currently under control, at least, or at least engaged in some form of soft nationalization. For example, in banking, ooh, big scary banking. I mean, you can't take a piss without having a regulator determining when and how long you're supposed to go. It's like just, it's, it's nominally, it's nominally private owned, but so much decision is, so many decisions are made by regulators and the central government that it's basically soft nationalized. Compare that to uh, Venezuela, which has an openly socialist government with its intent to nationalize the economy, or at the very least, nationalize large parts of the economy. Now, again, these are not statistics. These are not facts. This is just pure speculation. But I would wager at least like 70% of private industry is <coughs> so heavily regulated that or so heavily regulated and so heavily controlled that they that the owners can't take a piss without some government committee deciding when they when they should do it and at what direction and the remaining sector of the economy is very much under some form of government iron boot yeah but I the workers don't own it. Uh, so, no. The workers, I, it's, it's not. the workers don't own it, but they control it. They control it through the government. They control it through their committees. How do they control the, the industry? That isn't farming industry. They're the farming tools. The government is very much democratic. You have the central land committees that have a lot of power in their immediate vicinity. You have the at least nominally democratic central government, which is basically has near total control, or at least near total capacity to have control over the economy. The the workers, I wouldn't I wouldn't say they control it because I, I would say they do control the land uh, through those communals mm -hmm. that you uh, bring up, but I wouldn't say they control, uh, let's say, the uh, toilet paper industry or the uh, technology industry, I guess. I, I wouldn't say they control it. Uh, there's a simple fact. They don't own it. How do you know? If you don't own something and another body does, uh, that means, well... The state, if the state just owns it, then I wouldn't say. Mm -hmm. is, uh, especially with Venezuela's state, uh, who, that isn't very really democratic. In uh, 2008, Chavez announced the government takeover of the cement sector, which included uh, nationalization of numerous foreign held industries, including Switzerland's Wholesome, uh, Wholesome Limited. France's Lafarge SA, and I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, and Mexico's Cemex SAB de CV. All right. So I'm using that as an example. You also have the. In, two, in October 2011, Chavez says his government would seize private homes on the Los Roj archipelago in the Caribbean and use them for state run tourism. 
Yeah, but the government isn't very democratic, so I wouldn't say uh, any of that is owned by the workers. But the government... Or controlled by the workers. Excuse me. But the government... Uh... Government is ceasing the means of production. Yeah, that's that's the government. And the government currently owns a very large percentage of the economy. Oh, uh, how much? Uh, you have that number. Uh, no, I said the in from the one of my video. Yeah. I would say that was. For the in the, like the industry that's privately owned. Anyways, moving on, the large, <laughs> large sections of the economy, large segments, are under some form of soft nationalization or high regulation. Yeah, and I'm arguing that the government isn't very democratic at all, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say that the workers control it. Alright, so the threshold of whether or not the economy is democratic is going to be determined by whether or not the workers own it. Even though uh, you agree that an organization can in fact empower, or the workers can in fact empower an organization to operate on their behalf. For example, the central government through the Bolivarian Revolution of 1999 but the government isn't very democratic at all. So if the workers want something done that the government doesn't want done, it can happen. That isn't, the workers do not control that. So you're arguing that the government stopped being socialist at some point? Uh, I don't know if it was ever socialist. But the workers did empower the government to act on their behalf through the Bolivarian Revolution. I, I don't know much about that. Bolivarian Revolution. So it's kind of it, it, it's kind of important. Just saying. Yeah, I understand, but if we're arguing if the government is currently socialist. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that one more time? I understand, but we're arguing if the government is currently socialist. But the gov. But in order for the government to but what would a good... Mm. We already went over that. <laughs> In order for a government to be socialist, it would have to be both empowered by the workers to operate on their behalf and achieve this threshold of very democratic? Yes. Well, I mean, we can establish that Cuba is not the standard by which very democratic can be measured. I mean, it can, but not all I mean, forms not, of a very not, democratic government will look like Cuba. Yeah, it's not the be-all, end-all, but it's certainly a good example. Okay, so take that, I'm going to take that at your word, even though, well, it's, it's the Google election... Yeah, Google what? Sure. It's Google-able. I can search up on Google. It's I can't hear you. <laughs> it's you can just search it up it's easy right so I'm still not 100% clear on what the threshold of very democratic is uh, the people essentially control the government or uh, uh, the, that's yeah. that's not helpful uh, well <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you Okay, so the government needs to be controlled by the people in very unspecified ways, and we can extrapolate that to mean that whether or not the Venezuelan government is even very democratic is not entirely clear to you. Okay, I would say if the workers, or the people in general, right, if they... Uh, either elect people or do it themselves uh, over the con like control the legislative process 
against whom they and they have control. Okay, so they need to control the legislative process. So what does that look like? Uh, Cuba. Okay, so well, we've already established that Cuba is not the end all be all. So yeah, but I I don't have any other real life nations the states to point to. Mm-hmm. But at the very least, you can like explain how a, a very democratic legislature would operate. Um, well, there's a few ways it can the people can like Cuba. Uh, elect people in the could you please speak up a, uh, <clears throat> the people of uh, the nation whichever nation uh, uh, control the uh, the I'm having trouble well, uh, I'm the far- people, uh, sorry to interrupt. Some sort of control. The people have some sort of control over the legislative process, uh, as in. Uh, please speak up. I'm, I'm I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry. Uh, how's this? What? How's this? Not not better. <laughs> Uh, well, you can hear me, right? I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, the people can decide either through democratically electing people to represent them or uh, just deciding themselves uh, what laws uh, are passed or not passed. Well, I mean, we've. Already, I think we can agree that uh, direct democracy is going to be a, at least in your mind, a feature of democratic, uh, of a, I'm sorry, a socialist government. But it's clearly not a prerequisite, right? Yeah. So you described. Uh, so you say that if. Uh, legis- so legislatures can be empowered by uh, or that re- I'm sorry let me start over so you agree that representative democracy is valid yes okay well that's convenient because the it can be it can be so when is when is uh, I mean obviously a legislature isn't always going to be democratic but uh, uh, let me start over uh, legislature isn't always going to be socialist it's not always going to have a socialist agenda it's not always going to have a socialist party like that's obvious but yeah. uh, a social a government that is socialist and has a socialist agenda is not have its socialism card revoked because of representative democracy correct yeah Okay, so under what circumstances would uh, you said it can be though? I'm curious what you mean by that. Uh. <coughs> Other than the circumstances I just described, where the agenda is clearly not socialist. Uh, well, if the agenda isn't socialist, then that isn't socialist. Either. I'm sorry, could you repeat that one more time? If the agenda isn't socialist, then isn't socialist. Okay. Well, in Venezuela, we're considering that the overwhelming majority of those in the legislature are, in fact, members of the Socialist Party and are socialists themselves, presumably. Then we can say that the legislature in Venezuela is indeed socialist. Well, you have to look at the parts. You're gonna to have to bring your phone closer to your to your right. face because you I, have I, to look I, at the you have to look at the policies, not the, just the name. Yeah, and the policies are, as I've already described, nationalization. Yeah, 
and nationalization isn't specific to socialism. It's very much a clear. Uh, it's very much a clear feature of it, and I point that out because in the Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx did identify that in order to seize the means of production, you would need to empower a state to do exactly what Venezuela is doing right now. Yeah, I, I, I guess, but it, it isn't specific to socialism. It, 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 whether or not it's usually socialist or isn't, it, it, it isn't specific to it. So, the yeah. single oh, well, it's nationalizing thing is. But you would agree it's a feature of socialism. What? You would agree that it's a feature of socialism. <clears throat> um, yes. It doesn't always have to be. There are oh. many different flavors of socialism. Of course not, but it's a feature of socialism. There are many different permutations, obviously, and of course this feature is not exclusive to socialism. After all, some monarch might decide, like, hey, I want all this property for myself. But a socialist government that is attempting to seize the means of production and then later distribute it to the workers would probably do exactly what Venezuela is doing right now. Uh, from what you told me, uh, yes. Okay. So, how is it not heading in this direction? I mean, I don't know if they'll actually ever redistribute the means of production to the workers directly, so that <clears throat> they directly control it, or control it through these uh, land, land committees or organizations like it. I agree, it's heading in that direction, but it, it isn't socialist currently. Yeah, you've, uh, you said it was capitalist, then you backtracked and said that it was a uh, mixed economy. Yeah, I said I changed my mind um, mm -hmm. after thinking about, yeah, thinking about it a little bit more since I didn't really think about a mixed economy. So I a bit more, I would say, it's a mixed economy. Please keep your please keep your phone up to your face. Did you hear what I said? No, I didn't. <clears throat> uh, it after thinking about it a bit more, I would say that it's too Yeah. Okay. But yeah, for most of the people that are going to be listening to this, I think you've already confirmed what, or you've already confirmed my argument. You argue that what Venezuela. You argue that Venezuela is socialist, and I I disagree with that, and I don't see how I confirmed that. Well, so far you've agreed that it is heading in the directions towards socialism, that the government can operate on the behalf of the workers and has in fact been empowered to, by the 1999 Bolivar Revolution, with no clear backtracking being done on that on either side besides the uh, mass anti-government demonstrations that have been going on in Venezuela in recent times. There's the Land Appropriations Committee that is very much direct democracy in terms of how land, land and communities operate and are controlled. There's the legislature which is very much controlled by the Socialist Party and has a socialist agenda as demonstrated by rampant nationalism, or not nationalism, national, nationalization, and an unidentified but presumably very large sectors of the economy that aren't directly controlled by the government through nationalization are soft nationalized through either over-regulation or being the majority stakeholder in certain companies as seen through foreign oil companies. But Venezuela's government nationalizing things is not in the name of the people at all. It's not democratic. Uh, the workers and the people in general uh, do not I, I have can't, much you're, control of the government. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, did you hear any of what I said? I've heard bits and pieces. Okay. 
uh, the workers, the people in general, uh, do not have control over the government. Uh, yeah, I don't much at all. So, national uh, is a socialism. With the people. I, I'm having trouble hearing you. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm inches away from my phone screen. Uh, is this good? Yeah, it's actually a lot better. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll repeat again. The government isn't very democratic at all, so government seizures of industries isn't uh, in the name of the people, and the people don't control it. Well, how do you know it's not in the name of the people? How do you know they don't control it? Uh, the government isn't democratic at all. That's kind of circular logic, isn't it? No. No, wait, my mistake. Uh, so the government's not democratic. It's seizing property without the people's permission, and we know this because the government's not democratic. How do we know it's not democratic? Let's finish the loop. Uh, as you said, uh, Maduro, or what's his name? Uh, Maduro. I keep, I keep on confusing yeah, Maduro. Maduro. <clears throat> Maduro has a lot of power, uh, and he's. Would you say that the. Uh, how do I word this? Uh, the democratic, or the voting system, would that is that democratic? Yes. How so? Well, do the people get to vote? Well, yeah, they get to. Are their votes counted? I, I guess, yeah. <laughs> do, their, do, their vote, do their votes, when counted towards one majority or plurality over another, result in whatever they voted for being implemented? In this, just in the case of representative democracy, it's a person entering the legislature. I guess I that, I would. That's democracy. Would that? That's democracy. <laughs> but uh, Maduro, he, he has uh, a lot of control. <laughs> Uh, I mean, he could theoretically be voted out. He could theoretically uh, be voted out, but uh, still, having but a lot I, of power centralized in the hands of a single authoritarian doesn't is not a feature that disqualifies the government from socialism. If anything, it might actually be a, a feature of socialism because Karl Marx's actual direct Karl Marx's words were dictatorship of the proletariat. Now, whether or not uh, Maduro is proletariat is a discussion for another time, but yeah. By proletariat, uh, he's referring to the people. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the proles. So uh, he's meaning like the large majority, or just the pe all of the people control the means of production, the government, uh, and you know, so. Well, we've already established that the, that the workers can empower someone on, can empower people or individuals or organizations on their behalf, since representative democracy is valid for socialism, as you agreed to. Yeah. So, but the that, fact that he has a lot of power is, describe... is irrelevant. But Maduro, he's he's not the people. He's not the people, no, but he's the people's representative. To you, anyway. <laughs> I'm. Let me think. Uh, there was something you said uh, before you went on uh, quoting Karl Marx, but I forget. Uh, you have to be more specific. I, I'm trying to remember. Never mind. Uh, there was something you said, uh, but <laughs> hmm. wait a minute. If 
there are mass riots and protests and against the government, then how is he representing the people? That's a good question. How is he representing the people? I I wouldn't say he is, if there's mass protests and riots. Well, so far he seems to be winning elections. I mean, this is a question against democ. This is a question against democracy itself. Does the fifty-one percent have right to rule over the forty-nine percent? So, repeat what you said. I only got the fifty-one and forty-nine. This is a question against democracy itself. Does the fifty-one percent have the legitimacy to rule over the forty-nine percent? You mean ninety nine? No, for no forty nine. <laughs> what do you mean by the one percent over the forty nine percent? I said ninety nine, or not fifty one percent. Fifty one percent over forty nine percent. Oh, okay, that confused me. <laughs> it's fine. Uh. Oh shit! Can you repeat yourself again? Uh, my bad. I'm raising a question about democracy itself and whether or not the 51% of the people have the right or legitimacy to rule over the 49%. Well, that's a whole other debate. Yeah, that is, that is, but I think it's relevant the question of whether or not Maduro represents the people or not. Well, what were the turnouts of the last election? Well, let's look that up. Uh, I'm looking up the numbers right now. Uh, let's see if I can find them. Looks like presidential elections are scheduled to be held in May 20th. That's interesting. Of uh, this year? What? Uh, of this year? Yes. Oh. Uh, what are the yeah, results of the last? Let me see here. Yeah, I'm having trouble coming up with those numbers. That's alright. Is my audio any better? What? Is my audio any better? I, I can't hear you. <laughs> I was asking if my audio is any better. Well, now it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so, uh... I think we can wrap this up. Do you have any more questions? Uh, what do you identify as? Are you a voluntarist? I'm a voluntarist. All right. Um, I think that about wraps it up. Yeah. Well, anyways, yeah, thanks for uh, coming on.
and also thanks for the invite. This kind of thing is a lot of fun for me, and I really don't get to do it all that often. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, uh, but let's see. Do you want the recording? Uh, I'll just watch it on your channel. Okay. Yeah, it'll probably be right. a while since this thing was not streamed at all because YouTube is completely yeah. retarded. But yeah, what I'll do is I'll... Uh, basically make a simple edit to the video for example cutting out your swear at the beginning and putting a picture over it because I don't want people to be looking at my screen and yeah that'll be it yeah alright yeah so anyways thanks for stopping by <laughs>